Well, this is my mom, Nelly. Yay, yay. <laughs> Say, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to my daughter, what? Podcast. 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 I know, podcast. That's a weird name. I have an awesome guest today, you guys. It's one of my best friends. His name is Ron Benvenisti. Welcome, Ron. Yay! Hey, hey Ron. Happy to be here. Yeah. How long have we known each other? Has it been tw- 13 years? I think it's been longer. Yeah, I, at least. I want to say it was 2007 or eight, maybe. Yeah, and I love the discussions that we have. Sometimes I have comedians on, sometimes I have random friends on, but the reason I have Ron on is because we share so many like life stories and we know so much about one another. The show is called Find the Funny, you guys. And so what we are going to do is exactly that. Ron was telling me about an incident where he had a kidney stone because I recently had, as some of you know, some doctor stuff coming up. And I will also share my story that happened today okay. that was totally humiliating. But we're going to start off with Ron's because he's my guest. And mine can be even more humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So what, how long ago did you have the kidney stone thing? Uh, well, my, my son was a couple of years old and I remember I woke up one morning and I go, why is it the entire flank of my body hurts? Yeah. And I figured, oh, it's just going to go away. Right. So I went to a Ladrip meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and it was killing me. I made it through that and I figured, oh, it'll eventually go away. I went to a appointment with a client, and I remember it's hurting so bad that when a client was leading me from room to room, I'd let her go first, so when she went on the corner, I could drop down to my knees and like curl up and go, oh, wow. and then she would wow. come around and I'd go, okay, now let's look at this room. Wow. Um, decided to come home and went to the emergency room. Yeah. Ooh. And the pain was really bad. I had no idea what it was. Um, they kept me waiting, of course, for many, many hours. Yeah. And by the time that I got in to see the doctor, I was in pain. Apparently, everybody knew there automatically what it was, but not me. Did you? So you you knew exactly where? Oh, the, it wasn't a specific part. Your whole oh, flank hurt. Your whole side really? of your body hurts. I didn't know that. I thought with kidney stone, it's like very centralized. Oh, no, it's it's all over your your whole flank, and then okay. compare it to women having children. But right. I never had a baby, so I couldn't compare it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. But I do remember being wheeled in, and the thing that they did for me right away was they gave me morphine, and oh my God, what a great drug that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, the pain leaves your head and just goes down and just washes away. Wow. You didn't feel, did, were you like, did you, were you, did you know where you were? Were you losing? Oh, I was completely fine. Just nothing hurt. It was wonderful. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I had morphine when I had Zach, but I felt everything. I mean, it was it was a wonderful drug. I can yeah. see why people get addicted to it. Yeah, that's true. I went and had a CAT scan, and they discovered a kidney stone about the size of a piece of popcorn. That's wow. pretty And, and wow. the first thing I thought of in my brain was, well, that's not going to come out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make a bet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this was a Friday, and uh, I couldn't see the doctor until the following Monday, so the whole weekend was this excruciating pain for an entire weekend. And they they let you go through that. Oh, they, but they sent you home with drugs. Uh, didn't do a thing. Wow. And I remember moving around, which helped make it feel better, but they scheduled me for a process called lithotripsy, huh. which is they put you out, they use shockwaves to break up this, this stone into a pulverized mass. Mm. Ah. And the part I was telling you about earlier is when I woke up after this procedure, I look down and I'm catheterized, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, and they pull the catheter out and they say, now, as soon as you go to the bathroom and urinate, you can go home. And the nurse hands me a little plastic bottle to pee in. Yeah. What she didn't tell me was what was going to happen. I went into the bathroom. I stood up. And the second that I start to go, excruciating pain in my kidney and I'm now peeing red sand oh oh my gosh and i'm oh. like oh, oh i think i dropped to my, i think i dropped to my knees yeah. yeah and then put the the thing on the ground because i couldn't pick it up anymore Did you, you didn't pass out i was thinking about passing out <laughs> but i i managed to focus myself to get back to the the gurney that i was on and just laid there and i go 
why didn't they fucking warn me what yeah. was going to happen? Yeah. It's like, just go pee. I'm expecting yellow pee. Oh, no, no. Were you telling me about a string? Oh, well, yes. Besides string. that, yes. <laughs> I'm like, what are you wearing, a tampon? What's going on? Uh, yes, I was tampooned. <laughs> yeah. Um, the string is going up into your penis, through your body, and then in between your kidney and your bladder is your ureter. And they had this little thing in there to keep it open. And that had to be there for the next week to 10 days. Mm. So for a week to 10 days, I've got this blue string coming out of the end of my penis. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, the best part is. So your girlfriend gets to floss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> nice. And the best part is, is when you're trying to go to sleep and you're rolling around, you get hung up on this string and you wonder why all of a sudden you feel like somebody's yanking your penis off your body and it's you. Um, oh man not to mention the nocturnal erections and the things that are just so much fun with this piece of thread coming out of your body <laughs> so it's like waving a flag oh. <laughs> that was when and every time i had to go pee it hurt so bad this is where my son learned the word fuck yeah because right, i would course. sit down and go motherfucker ow and then my kids were running around the house going fuck Mother fuck 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 i was like <laughs> wonderful <ow>. wonderful <laughs> That's awesome. We're teaching them early. I love it. Um, and and so, but you've you've also had other surgeries since then. You've had um, both shoulders, rotator both, cuff. Both shoulders. Yes. Oh, I thought it was just the one. No, left and right, and a hip replacement. And just to throw in some more fun, I had leukemia in the middle. Oh Whoa. shit! So That's you know, right? I know, man. You've been through a lot, but you have such a great sense of humor about it. Well, if it doesn't, if it if yes. it's going to kill you, might as well make it funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like that. Music. Yeah, that's exactly what that happened. One. It's the truth, and you know what? It's just a matter of getting through it. And if you don't, if you don't just roll with the punches, you're going to not really do so well. Right. <laughs> exactly. I remember the whole catheter situation one time. Well, I've had like three major knee surgeries. That the last one, it's half titanium they replace the acl but i remember going in you know how before surgery they always tell you you can't eat for what is it 20 24 hours that 24 hours you can't eat but then there's like 12 hours where you can't drink anything mm. they don't even want you having water mm -hmm. so i had maybe a few ice chips and I remember being in the pre-op room, which is where you're still awake and they're prepping you for surgery. And there was a guy in there that didn't look like he knew what he was doing. He had a ponytail. He looked like he was 24 years old. Ugh. And I'm laying there really nervous about the surgery. And there's like five people in the room and you, it's in my act now, but he just lifts up my gown in front of everybody. And I'm <sighs> like, what are you doing? And he goes, I have to put the catheter in. And I go, Oh hell no! I am not. Get, I have not eaten anything for twenty four hours. I I didn't even have water. I haven't had a drip of water. Mm. I am not. I just peed. I am not having a. I refuse it. Mm. And he goes, "Okay, ma'am, we'll <laughs> totally respect that." And then the anesthesiologist walks. They wheel me to the other room. There's still like five people in there prepping me, and then you know they do the countdown, and I'm like, "No." No catheter, none. I want nothing up there because there's kids in the like. There's they just treat you like a piece of meat, right? Yeah. So I'm like, no catheter, and then they put the thing on you, and like five, four, no catheter, <laughs> you know, and you're out. I wake up in the hospital bed, fucking catheter. Oh, man. I remember trying to sit up in my in my bed with all the knee pain, or I could already feel it, and I was like, what? What? Am this is something wrong. Like, what's, what's in my junk? And and I put my hand down there. I was like, that was the first thing. Here's my parents. Like, people come to see me. I go, motherfucking catheter. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I said. Like, I wanted to find that guy so bad because, because he wasn't respectful in the way that he did it. Like, he just, like threw up the thing and when it, and I'm like, whoa, you don't do that. Like you just be discreet, man. Like, I don't know, put a sheet and you know that it ended up on OnlyFans or something. <laughs> you know, he's his Instagram buddies. There's like five guys in there because it's all dudes and they're like 24, yeah. you know? He was like the old time photographer where they put the thing over their head and about the underneath. Yeah, do it that way, man. <laughs> put a little light down there. 
here. Ask me out. What's going on? I was, I felt so violated. And then I felt the exact same way just yesterday. You don't know this, but I went, um, I have this little thing on my skin, on my leg, and it, it's just this little round thing. Sometimes it changes texture. It's, it's not, I don't have skin cancer in my family, but I was like, you know what? It feels crusty sometimes and then it goes away and then it feels, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it checked. So I go on, I've never seen this skin doctor before and I'm in a gown, which will will show a picture of the beautiful gown. I was very cute. (laughs) And the nurse that went in, he was this guy who was in his 20s, very sweet, was asking me all the questions. The doctor comes in who I've never met, couldn't have been a bigger piece of shit like, have you ever met these people that they hate their job and their life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they're doing the job that they shouldn't, like, yeah. don't work at the DMV if you hate people. Right. Like, or don't right. be in customer service. Right. Don't be at the call center for 911 if you hate <laughs> humans. Like, right. like, what the fuck's your problem? You know, like, <laughs> don't, don't have those jobs, man. If you, there's other jobs where you don't have to communicate with other people, man. Okay. And, and so he walked in, he couldn't have been colder. And I, I have, um, I didn't know that they were going to do a full body exam. Here I am thinking they're just going to look at my leg. He's not an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, you need to see my tits. They're not that long, buddy. It's right here by, by my ankle. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. And and so he go. He looks at the spot. They take a picture of it. He looks at it with. There's this little magnifying glass that they look at it with a special light. And he goes, it doesn't look. It looks like a he named it and he goes but but just to be safe we, next time you come in we're going to biopsy it i go okay great and he's like let's just check the rest of your body well i didn't know they were going to do that so i didn't wear a bra cuz they said just take your p- pants and your shirt off you can keep your bra on well guess what i wore a full length tank mm. with a bra in it so the only way he can look at my skin is if i take the whole thing off and so I d- wasn't expecting to do that. So I'm laying there. Of course, the 20 something year old nurse is there. So I lay down and he did the same thing that the asshole with the cat. Th- he just lifts up the gown. Even the kid was startled. He goes, <laughs> like he felt bad. He was like, looks at the wall. And I'm like, dude. And then he's like, okay, now flip over. Wow. Yeah, not even, and he just went like that. I was like, you just, so you just check me out. You're not really looking at my skin. So then I turn over and then he literally says, wow, you're tan. Wow. Oh. <laughs> A little creepy. You're looking at my tan lines? Wow. Yeah. He's like, do you spend a lot of time in the sun? You should be wearing sunscreen. I go, I'm Latina. I could spend two minutes in the sun and I get really brown. Like I would, mm. I work in warm locations mostly. I go, and I was so like agitated. I started getting like shaky and pissed and oh my gosh, I, I swear I'm going to wait for this guy in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my experience <laughs> yesterday. Wow. Okay. And then I don't know if you have ever had to do this. You, you've heard of Quest Diagnostic Labs, oh, yes. right? So most doctor's offices, they don't have full testing facilities at their office. So they'll go, here's a referral, go to Quest. And I don't know if they have them everywhere, but they have them all over California. So at this one, um, last year, do you remember me telling you that I got E. coli? Yes. And I've never had that before. It's because I went to Mexico and I ate some raw meat raw ish it was was undercooked i know i go to mexico all the time this first time i ever got it so the e coli i was on so many antibiotics that i developed c diff which c diff is you could die from that you know Mm. um and it requires even more heavy dose of antibiotic so i finally knocked it out of my system uh, Tignataro had C. diff and didn't know it and almost died from C. diff. So it's, it's my mom's had it. It's dangerous. So I just wanted to check to make sure yeah. I don't have it anymore. Okay. And so 
I just went to a gastrologist. Yeah, gastroenterologist? Yes, that okay. guy. That ding, guy. Ding, 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 that ding, guy. Ding. Okay. <laughs> you win. All right, so I, I went to him and he goes, you know what, it's, it's time for you you hit the age where you should probably get a colonoscopy and uh i've had many of those yeah and an endoscopy oh yeah at the same time oh they, they get you from either end that's Whoa. an orgy <laughs> that's a tinder date <laughs> right there and i was like oh, you can do them at the same time i speak for a living is it can because remember the old days i remember one time they did that and i couldn't talk for like two days they scratched it up yeah have you had it done no recently? I, I had it i had it done a long time ago when i had a little thing in my throat but it doesn't matter if i speak or not <laughs> yeah so so my uncle had it done recently both ends and uh he said that it's totally different now because they put you under they do it at the same like same appointment and if there's any polyps or anything like that they just remove them right away right. and you wake up he said he woke up and said when do we start wow yep. <laughs> he couldn't even tell his throat didn't hurt wow, i was like that goodness. sounds like a date with trump you know because that <laughs> he's teeny you know what i'm saying before that he's like let's just test and make sure that you don't have c diff so that's basically a poop test right so he writes a prescription for quest and i go there because i just need the container i don't have like i don't have to go so i can't <laughs> make an appointment and make myself go in the office like i have to take the container home with me yeah. but because i didn't have an appointment and those places suck and there's like people camping out trying to get in and get their blood work and you know there's covid in there and you're just yeah. like walking in like don't touch any walls <laughs> and they they have their window closed half the time when you go in there and they just call you by your name appointment well i don't have an appointment so they call the lady she walks in and I walk in, I grab the door and I walk in after her. And then one of the nurses is like, what are you doing in here? You're not supposed to be in here. She's like drawing blood for somebody. And I go, hands up. I need a shit cup. <laughs> Who's going to give me a shit cup? You know, like it literally, I was like, I just need a poop. I need a, I need a poop in a cup. <laughs> so I wait. She brings out, there's two containers. I'm like, son of a. All right, so that was yesterday. I, I, I'm so reading the instructions, twice. <laughs> yeah, twice. I was like, man, I better get Starbucks. Separate locations or you couldn't <laughs> cut the one you took in half. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, but this is what I didn't know. She goes, this one is a different type of sample, like this one in this cup. This one you have to freeze. What? what? Yeah. I have to freeze one of my shits and the other one gets to be defrosted. Right like next frosting. to the ice cream sandwiches exactly. in the freezer. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I have roommates. It's in the freezer right now. Sarah, don't oh. eat the Rocky Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's like, warning. how humiliating. Okay, and so the instructions are really hard. They give you this, this piece of paper that has tape on it that you put across the toilet. So I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm tr it's like a f fucking science project, okay? I'm, I'm like, do I get to color in the sky? What are we doing? So I tape it to the toilet and I start to go. And guess what? When You know when you go number two? Number one happens usually. Yeah. Okay? So number one's happening. Guess what happens to the shit? Falls in the toilet because oh, the paper the breaks paper apart. <laughs> and you only have to go so much. And I'm like... Ah, it's in the toilet. It's contaminated. <laughs> Super fun. Well, I'm not going to just shit on my floor. Right. You know, it's not a frat party. <laughs> wow, this is so bizarre. This is horrible. This is, the, I did all of this for a bit, you guys. <laughs> I don't even have C. Diff. Where was the camera? <laughs> Where was the camera when this is going on? <laughs> oh my gosh. This would have been an amazing TikTok video. I'd be I, know. I would be Matt Rife right now if, if I had shown myself that, shitting that on my me, own floor. That reminds me of the joke you used to do with your friends where you'd pull saran wrap over the toilet bowl very tightly. It, 
and they wouldn't see it and they would sit down oh, or, and, no. and it would just go everywhere. That would have been more effective. <laughs> yeah. That would have, they should have given me saran. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me paper, which if you pee on it, it falls apart. So I was like, what, what were they thinking? Yeah. And so I put the little saran and then it's, it's literally in the fridge. So don't eat it, Sarah. I know I eat everything. <laughs> oh, it's not chocolate. That's not mine. So. I mean, it is chocolate. <laughs> I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a fetish guy out there who's waiting for that refrigerator. I know how gross. Okay, so guys, that's a lot of information about Alvarado. Point being, this is this is the great thing about life is that is that the the stuff that scares the shit out of us and the stuff that's hard is like that. I love joking about it. I can't wait to tell the story. I can't wait to tell the story. I can't believe I'm single. <laughs> Let me see, what did I have for dinner last night? Oh, okay, yeah, exactly, there it is. Exactly. Oh, I'm like, funny. oh, do they want a sample of corn? Because I got that. <laughs> and and then and then as a comic, this is where your mind goes. Okay, so the event happens. And then the next thing that you go through is um you you make it into a more specific joke. So that that's the actual truth, the scenario of what happened. And then you imagine the rest of it. Like, so I started to imagine whose job it is mm. to get that's what they do all day. They're a fecal they specialist. Yes. People yeah. And they, <laughs> they literally go through it oh, wow. and they're not homeless. They're they <laughs> have a they probably that, get paid really it's like, what did you do in your life that you, you're getting paid to do that? Talk to about hating your job. <laughs> I, know. I know, right? Yeah. Those are the people that work at the DMV. That's, that's right. That's where I'm supposed to drop off my sample. It's the what DMV. What if you love poop? What if that's your passion? Right. <laughs> I mean, imagine, okay, say it's in <clears throat> the saline solution or whatever. It still stinks. Right. You know, like even my mine stinks guys i know you don't believe it but it it does you mean a dove doesn't come and take it away <laughs> exactly <It's>, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and and so you think like what life did they lead to have to get to that point mm. of like sifting through and it's a, obviously a very important job because yeah. that will tell me if i have this thing in my body that could potentially really harm me but then the next step is okay you looked at it in a microscope great let's go in with a camera because we just didn't get enough mm -hmm. that's the other doctor like you you've had how many of them uh at least four at least four. At least four. And I'm still traumatized. In one night? Or <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a bad night. <laughs> yeah, you went to Vegas, huh? A lot of, you lost. I, I, I woke up and go, how many was that again? <laughs> yeah, and so has the procedure gotten better? Yes. They've gotten better. I, rem them. I remember having the first one when I was a little after 50 because my dad eventually, uh, unfortunately, died of colon cancer, so oh, I'm predisposed yeah, have to have to. that. Mm. Um, back in the first one, they... As they're looking at you, you know, first of all, you have to clean yourself out. You have to prep the night before. Right. Which is just a joy in itself. Yeah. Horrible. And when you finally go to the doctor, the, back then they used to fill you up with air so they could open things up and look through them. And I had a oh, couple wow. of polyps I had to get rid of. Wait, like a balloon? Yeah. <laughs> like had a little camera or something? Yeah. But I remember being in the recovery room and there's a very good looking nurse in there. And all I'm doing, doing in there is farting. Or, <laughs> It's like, how you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. And you're, and you're trying not to, but you can't help it because you're just filled up with air. And I'm oh sure God. she's so used to it. you were butt queefing. I was butt queefing. In between, <laughs> now you know how we feel. In between. In between you're trying, trying to be sexy. And you're yeah, like, I go, hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> it's like, excuse me. <laughs> and I'm sure she's used to it, but I was not. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're trying to be a stud. And you're yeah, like, you're trying Whoa. to be all suave and everything. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, what am I on, an elevator? What happened oh, there? It, it was something. Oh, my gosh. They, uh, they've since gotten better with the air, but it's, uh, it's still... They, they still don't, they don't do the air now, right? No, it's, it's actually gotten much better. You actually leave and, and you feel okay. But what the part that I also remember is... The same stuff that killed Michael Jackson is what they used to put you out. And it's a nice little nap, a propofol nap. Mm. Oh, 
Oh, do they still? Yeah, I guess. Mean, well, they know how to use now? it. At the yeah. Home. They. Oh wow. Listen, some people who have the really bad insurance, they get like a, a, a volume and they have to be awake through that nonsense. I have great insurance. I want to be out. I want to remember none of this. Yeah, yes, well, exactly. Any. It's a little, I mean, the only thing is it's a little, like I just, I'm just picturing myself because you're out, which means that you're lifeless, which right. means that your body's like this, which means that. You're on your side. Yes, you're on your side and they're going in both ways. And yeah. I just feel like you're like this, yeah. you know, do you shave? What do you do? <laughs> I mean, they're seeing every, like literally your worst parts and, 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 and they're moving a, you well, around. You're not in point. control of your own body. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, are they taking pictures while they pose with you? It's like, it, Hey, look at this guy over yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, she's flexible. Look at this leg. <laughs> you know, like, and, and, and I just, I would love to have a camera in the room just to see, because they've got to be laughing about stuff and because they do this probably yeah, they, six times not, a day right? to 10 times a day. Oh, right? every 45 minutes. It's, it's like a train going in and out. It's like they in Literally one and out the other. Literally a train going yes. in and out. I, I mean. <laughs> and they've got a bunch of TVs and very small, you have some cameras here, but they have very tiny little itty bitty cameras mm -hmm. and they're just, you know. It, ah, yeah. Just, the, again, what guy or doctor or woman goes, you know what I want to do? I know. I want to. I just really want to look at assholes. Oh, <laughs> work at the DMV. <laughs> work at the DMV. I don't know why I keep coming. They are back. looking at assholes at DMV. Exactly. That's my point. Is it like, yeah. I, I, um, I, I don't, I don't know. I get it. I, I understand you're a doc. We need those doctors. I just want to interview one of them. You know, I just want to go when you were a kid growing up, you know, making a drawing. Was it always a circle? Did it always look like a piece of calamari? I mean, what, what were you drawing when you little were little brown rings? Exactly. I mean, what? What was your fantasy growing up? I want, uh, I want to go into medicine. They just didn't tell you what part they want to go into. Exactly my point. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! But that's that's what I love about being friends with you is is um, I can tell you my stuff. We can cry, and then you know after that we're laughing about the absurdity yeah. of stuff of mm -hmm. life of like trying to make it to tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's that's who, those are the people that I am closest to. Is is the people that I can cry with, but then five minutes later we can laugh about the exact same thing I was just crying about, and or vice versa. That that if I were to joke with you about your condition or or something you went through, like remember you wanted to get snipped. Yes. <laughs> Did haven't, you haven't got snipped yet? You haven't got. I snipped? have not. Are you, I want to go. There's, some, there, there's, there's something about a doctor with a scalpel and your balls in his hand and a scalpel in the other. It just kind of makes I'm me nervous. Latino. You just lay right here and Sarah and I, you hold his feet. <laughs> hold him up. <laughs> It'll be done before you know it. I, I have a fantasy of going to see that. Like, wow. it's just like, you know how you, <laughs> this is how much I love men. Oh my God, that's balls. a fantasy. That's right. <laughs> like, like. Like you know those those guys that rope the calves. <laughs> yes, <laughs> That's what it's... For, for castration purposes. That's like... what I would <laughs> like it done. Yeah, I'd be afraid. Three that... seconds flat. I'd, I'd be afraid the wrong thing would get snipped off of there. Yeah, I I know I know there's me most men are afraid of the yeah. snipping. Oh yeah. But I kind of feel like well you got two of them. <laughs> and they're gonna, <laughs> and they're gonna cut. Both sides of them, Both too. Both sides? That's right. Each know. ball pr produces enough stuff. Enough stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, keep one and, and <laughs> the cancel other. the other, and let's just see how it goes, and then you can make up your mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I don't... That's the snipping. The um, snippage. The snippage. I want to go, and, <laughs> and I'll hold the piece. If I ever have it done, I will allow you to come, and, and I'll ask you if you can come in the room and watch. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I would Look be... Look at that. It's a dream come true. Yeah. That, see, that's what a best friend does. That's... Then you really find me attractive. <laughs> exactly. I'd be like a tear coming down like the Indian guy. <laughs> Remember? That guy? I'll oh. be that sad also.
Uh, you know, and you've been to a bunch of my shows. Yes. You know that I do stand up and, and you're super supportive of my career. Um, the great thing I love about how you and I work as friends is that I'll start talking about an idea and then you yes and and you I like uh, Ron has a really great sense of humor and you you see things kind of in a different way which is what comics do we see things kind of uniquely so I want to show you this video um Sarah's going to pull it up so this was a remember how you told me about the Elon Musk thing oh yes okay so it's not that okay when I was looking for that this is what I found on this is uh TMZ TMZ I love TMZ okay so this is a school in Oklahoma that is doing a fundraiser I did see that where kids are licking these are high school kids licking peanut butter off of each other's feet, feet yes. what? and armpits full of hair Harry guy's armpits and they're licking they're yes. they're being there's teachers there there's adults there and they have been doing this for years and just now oh my gosh someone filmed it and T, uh TMZ got a hold of it yes I I remember watching it going, what the fuck is wrong with people I mean obviously wow. it, do they get paid by the toe it's yeah exactly do they get paid by the do, what what exactly like who wins really and how do they raise money? It's so like nobody. Too? Yes, like, armpits, hairy armpits. So obviously it's chunky style peanut what, butter. What, what do they do? <laughs> what, what do they do? Do they say you're going to get five dollars per toe for the donation? How do they work that out? Exactly. And in my case, it would be six. Yes, <laughs> toes. But like, I can just imagine that dogs are watching that going. Is nothing safe and secure anymore? <laughs> Does no one respect boundaries? But you know what? They're millennials. So I'm sure they said something like, but it's reduced fat peanut butter, guys. Come on. We have ethics here. They can't tell if it's the chunky or the smooth because it doesn't matter. Exactly. Well, it's it's definitely chunky now. Yes. And And like, so those are the kinds of things that I... As a comedian, I, I take that stuff and then I go what and I write. What the fuck is wrong with people? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> people ask me all the time, how is it that you come up with material, Lisa? Look around it's you, so man. I just wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I wake up. <laughs> My God. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Anyway, you guys, uh, this was... I mean, such an honor to have my buddy Ron Benvenisti here to join us. Thank you so much. It was for a pleasure by. to be here. I was so nervous to be actually on the camera and a microphone because that's not what I do. But you made it very, very fun. Oh, and I mean, this is this is why I surround myself with fantastic people like now, you. Now let's go get drunk. I know. <laughs> let's go do that. And uh, we will see you guys in two weeks on Find the Funny. Please subscribe, share. Um, that always helps us find the funny podcast.com. So if you want to ask me any questions or if you want to leave some comments or you have an issue in your life that you want to help make funny and you can't find it, send it to me. I would love to help you. So we will see you guys very soon. I'm Lisa Alvarado. I love you until next time. See you later. I hope everybody listen to my daughter and see it and Laughing with her because she is very funny. <laughs>